it's black, so it's a blackout. Now, sometimes, David, here under the bright lights, the very opposite of a blackout, it's, it's pretty tense, you know, the, the nerves are tight. Everyone has to try and relax and just breathe. <laughs> I hope you're listening to this, Colin and John. Uh, there's a little bit of therapeutic advice in uh, tonight's story. Uh, the word is Q-I, and uh, despite how it's spelt, it's pronounced Qi. Um, and it's a Chinese concept, and it translates as being uh, breath or air. And the, But the best uh, translation probably is energy flow. And uh, it's a concept that is central to the traditional medicine, um, Chinese medicine of acupuncture. Which is a very different way of kind of looking at, at the way the body works compared to a lot of Western medicine. Very true. And uh, the whole um, sort of ethos of acupuncture is releasing that energy flow, that qi through your body by uh, inserting needles at various points around the body or uh, heat, uh, heat pads as well. Um, but with qi, it's, uh, a lot of people confuse it with Tai Chi. Um, now, even though it's pronounced the same way, it's a different spelling and has a different root. Uh, tai Chi translates as being extreme limit. No talk of energy flow. And the full phrase is Tai Chi Quan. And Quan is Chinese for fist. And Tai Chi Quan translates as fist of the uh, great absolute. Oh, right, which, which, which doesn't sound quite so calm as <laughs> the doesn't. sort of gentle breath flow of... QI. It, it doesn't. However, if you consider the making of a fist, not from a pugilistic point of view or a, a hostile point of view, it's that uh, concept of the uniting, uh, the yin and the yang, uh, yin being the female uh, and the yang being the, the male, of the, uh, the supreme unity. So that's the concept of Tai Chi, that movement, uh, still with energy flow, but it has a different derivation. But really, to get the energy flowing of any Scrabble player, it is to preserve that beautiful word QI because it does get you out of a lot of squeaks without that U, I can tell you that. It certainly does. All that from two little letters. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Great stuff. Thank you, David. Our scores. Colin is on 10. John is on 13. More letters are in store. And uh, Colin, would you choose them, please? Uh, can I have a constant, please? Thanks, Colin. T. And another constant. N. And a vowel, please. I. And another vowel. E. And a consonant. B. Another consonant. R. Another consonant, please. T. A vowel. O. And another vowel, please. And last letter, A. Thank you, Lily. 30 seconds on the clock. <laughs> actually going to ambush John with battier, uh, which is uh, you know, more demented, uh, which is a word here, but batter is certainly fine. Well played, John. Uh, the eight that I did find there was baritone, B-A-R-I-T-O-N-E, which is obviously a male uh, register of voice. Nice find, David, and nice work, John. Six points. Let's have some more letters now. Uh, John, your turn. Thank you. I have a consonant, please. Thanks, John. N. And another consonant. L. And one more, please. H. And another. S. And a vowel. I. One more vowel, please. E. Uh, I'll take another vowel. I. Another consonant. D. And a vowel to finish. And last letter, E. Thank you, Lily. 30 seconds.
did you go that time, John? I got a six. And how many for you, Con? Six also. Let's start there. Uh, shined. And yours, John? Same word, shined. Would you mind verifying? Thank you. Bright light. Bright light, well done. I would have been so tempted to ask for a consonant as that last letter with the potential of shielding. Um, anyway, the E came up and uh, up popped uh, an eight-letter word, sideline. S-I-D-E-L-I-N-E. -E. Very nice work. And solid sixes for John and Colin. We're heading for the numbers again now, and uh, just a few minutes ago, John made a fairly adventurous choice with his number selection. What are you going to do, Colin? Get uh, brave. I'll go for the same adventurous choice. And just uh, one large one and five small ones, please. Thanks, Colin. That's one large and five small. And our numbers. Six, seven, one, seven, nine. And the large number is 50. And the target to reach is... 727. Let's head for it. Last time we had 737, now we've got 727. How close did you get? Uh, 729. 729, just two away. Good work, John. Um, I've made a mistake. I, was, I thought I was going oh, to wrong. Okay, an implosion over there. But uh, Colin, tell us how you got there. Um, 7 plus 7 is 14. 7 plus 7 is 14. Um, multiplied by, so 50 plus 1 is 51. 50 plus 1 is 51. And multiply those two together. You get 714. Yep. And plus 9 plus 6. Plus 9 plus 6 is 729. Nine. So, good work. You are just two away from the target. Now, Lily, you've got your uh, concentrating very hard face on. Actually, I can always tell when you're having to think hard because you press your nose with your pen. <laughs> <laughs> Makes this the brain yeah, work. <laughs> this is my secret <laughs> pressing my nose. Um, I got there in the end. It was fairly tricky, though. Now, um, 9 plus 1 is 10, by 7 is 70. Now, 70 plus 50 is 120, and 120 by 6 is 720, add the 7, 7 to 7. Very nice work. Is that a kitchen sink that we used everything there? I think we already yeah, I think, much have. I think you're right, it's a kitchen sink. A kitchen sink with the right title. Well done, Lily. But uh, well done to Colin. He's scored another seven points. That means we have a very, very close game on our hands tonight. Colin's on 23. John is on 25. As we head into our next break, that's another word mix for you, of course. A trooper. And the clue this time, can put you through. See you in a while.